Interpretation that involves your signage and labels is uh, a really um, important element of an exhibition. I mean, this is what communicates with people. They want to know about the objects. They want to know about the whole, the whole context of the exhibition. So, you know, besides the title wall, um, which gives the title of the exhibition, um, at the in this particular exhibition, we decided that we would simply have the title on the inside, but we would have the title also on the outside, and then list also the different um, donors uh, to help that help make this exhibition possible. But inside also, we have a, a sort of entry statement, uh, not too long, because people don't like to read long labels or long uh, a lot of information. Uh, statistics show that um, you know you get anything more than about 250 words, even on a, on an intro sign, uh, you're not going to get anyone reading it. So I usually try to keep it down to even a, I think this one here is about 125 words, um, which is is still, in my opinion, plenty. And a lot of people probably don't even read to uh, bother to read that. Um, but I'm I try to keep. Uh, uh, you know, I, I try to, to think always as I'm working on, on developing the interpretive material for an exhibition, how I can say what needs to be said in the fewest possible, you know, number of words and still get the idea across. Uh, it, it takes concentration, it takes a lot of work to, to write so succinctly and still get that message uh, or communicate the necessary message. Here in this exhibition, we have really one block of entry signage uh, with, a, with a secondary one around on the back of the, the title wall. Um, next to that, that in introductory um, text, there is a map that shows the, the region highlighting those uh, six provinces in southwest China from which these objects come from in the, the full context of the map of China, so that viewers get an idea of exactly where this is located um, uh, in China. But also the exhibition labels are done in such a way for the, that is for the individual objects. Most of the labels, in fact almost all of the labels, are on the platforms. And as a, as a consequence, uh, we had to be very careful uh, because the platforms are, are only a foot from the floor, that the type would be large enough so that viewers wouldn't have to bend down and sort of try to uh, view these things. So we, we experimented with um, type size, uh, letting between the lines, uh, a choice of typeface that would be easily readable. Um, and we actually kept making it larger and larger. Um, we also want, I did not want to have white labels on these dark platforms. Um, and this was, this presented a problem because they would have, they would have been very bright in value and they would have been very distracting. So by having, um, what, what Wayne did is he worked very hard working on the computer to match the color uh, in inks of our our paint color, uh, a super job, so that these labels sort of just blend in with the environment and they don't jump out. But it meant that the type would have to be in white on this dark color. Now that ar ar immediately is also a little harder to read. And so we also discussed, well, should we have it a, not a full white, but just, you know, a tone. Uh, we eventually opted for the white because we kept looking at it and having people look uh, evaluate this, and we we decided that the white um, that the white was really actually easier to read, but white on a dark color is is a little harder to read than black on a light background. Um, it gets uh, the white on a dark background tends to get spidery and kind of vibrate. On those individual labels, there is a map that shows the province 
I mean, the county in that province is highlighted so that people can get an idea exactly where this, these, this outfit or this uh, textile came from. And then we have the ID information that provides the information of what group of people um, and what area it came from, and then uh, the date of the, the, the date of the object, when it was made and used. And then we have the, an interpretive paragraph. They all needed to be able to fit onto one large label. Again, what is important is, is not making a sort of hard and fast rule that you say, well, I can never, I have to get this all edited down to just so it'll fit on one label of a certain size. I always feel that, you know, if people realize that one or two labels are extensively long, it must be more important information, and so it will actually encourage them to read it. But if all of the labels were real, real long, they, would, they wouldn't read, they, w they would probably not bother to read anything. So what I really try to do when I'm developing interpretive labels is to get variety in the length of those paragraphs or what I am writing about that, so that not everything is sort of a, a, a standard same length. This is a very good example of um, variety in uh, individual labels, individual object labels. Uh, you can see here where we have, for the umbrella cover, we have, there was a, a tremendous amount of information available on that, uh, cultural information that was very important to understanding the object. And as hard as I tried to, to, um, to condense this down into, uh, so that it would fit on one label, I soon realized that that was, that was just going to do injustice for the for the uh, umbrella cover itself. So I just accepted the fact that, okay, one or two labels uh, can be lo longer. And, and I really feel that by having a long one, people will realize immediately that there must be important information here, because it's, it is significantly larger than the others nearby. And so therefore, they may be encouraged to read about that. Um, but if you'll notice, there's also even variation in all three of these labels. Uh, the altar apron, where the paragraph only has five lines, but here we have quite a bit more for the Taoist priest robe. It is important that w when you're developing the interpretation that you just don't make all of your interpretive information the same size all the way, th the way through, because it's going to immediately send the signal to everyone that, you know, there, it's it's all the same. It's, there's a, a lot of information. Um, <clears throat> but by doing it in, in, in natural with natural variation, it, it kind of encourages people to sort of, well, maybe I can read this one. It's not very long. Um, you know, it, it, it's, it's kind of like trying to, f to psychologically um, uh, entice people into reading these things. Um, and, and quite frankly, not everyone is going, I mean, you have to accept the fact that, that most people probably are not going to read many of the labels anyway, but they will, when they see something that, they w that they're interested in, there should be interpretive information there for them to be able to read it. Mm -hmm.